are specialists. The old money overachievers of the Nen world. A lifestyle that most of us will likely never get to experience no matter how hard we work. However, as a consolation prize, each and every one of you are capable of subscribing to the New World Review and thus receiving regular Hunt Hunt content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Just don't tell the specialists, okay? It'll be our little secret. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga. And today we are going to be concluding our journey through the realm of the six basic aura typings of Hunt Hunter with quite probably the most intriguing exploration that Nen has to offer, being the art of specialization. And to put it very basically, a specialist use of Nen is simply an invocation that cannot be classified into the other five areas, being enhancement, transmutation, manipulation, conjuration, and emission, which makes specialization very, very vague, but it also provides the most potential for some truly insane abilities. But very importantly, specialization is the only Nen category that cannot be accessed by those with other natural affinities. So for example, even if you were a conjurer or a manipulator, which are right next to the specialist on the Nen Ring, then even though they are only one place removed, this invocation is completely inaccessible to them. And in order to use specialist Nen, you need to be a natural specialist, the existence of which seems to be quite rare in the world of Hunter Hunter. That isn't to say that all hope is lost though. Intriguingly enough, unlike every other area of Nen, it is indeed possible for a user to become a specialist later in life with some form of Nen evolution or via another unknown factor. And the greatest example we have of this would come in the form of Karapika, whose Nen typing actually changes from conjurer to specialist whenever he activates his scarlet eyes. And Karapika was well placed to access this switch because conjurers and manipulators allegedly have the highest chance of becoming a specialist while the enhancer would have the lowest chance. But as such, specialists hold many key advantages in the Nen world, the first of which being that they can afford to be a bit more loose with the revelation of their general typing. And this is because it doesn't actually do anybody a whole lot of good to discover that you are a specialist. It still leaves them with a gigantic question mark as if they knew nothing about you at all. And you might make the argument that it tells opponents valuable information about one's placement on the Nen Ring, and that a specialist, for example, would be highly unlikely to be using enhancement techniques because it would be their exact opposite, but that's not necessarily true either, because your specialist ability could be something that provides an enhancement effect. So simply identifying a specialist is borderline useless. There are still so many questions. And we'll briefly go into Karapika again for an example of this business. His specialist ability is known as Emperor Time, which while invoked, gives him 100% proficiency in each Nen category. Meaning that even as a specialist, Karapika can use enhancement on the same level as that of a natural enhancer. A factor that greatly confused the Phantom Troops Uvagin, who was a natural enhancer himself. But that's the really painful thing to remember about specialists. For all intents and purposes, they can do almost literally anything, which makes predicting them nigh on impossible unless you have an intimate familiarity with the specialist in question. Before we dive into more of the users though, let's also address Hisoka's semi-reliable personality test in which he identifies specialists as independent and charismatic, but in a very specific way according to the magician, because apparently they have natural charisma that draws others, but they will refrain from becoming too close to these people and generally like to keep their thoughts to themselves. And look off the top of my head, I can definitely think of at least four specialists that this accurately depicts, but there's also a handful that it certainly does not. But for a discussion regarding specialization, I don't think we can really start anywhere else except with the leader of the Phantom Troop, Crawler Lucifer, who is probably the most notorious specialist in the series. And I guess I should preface this by saying it's not entirely clear how specialist abilities are generated in the same way that other affinities allow for technical explanations of. For example, with Conjuration, we know that a user has to undergo image training in order to form their eventual Hatsu, but with specialists, it's much more of a gray area and it would seem as if abilities are manifested almost entirely by raw desire and or need for them. And in Crollo's case, that would form Skill Hunter, a delightful little book that allows him to quite literally steal the Nen abilities of others. Providing Crollo, of course, fulfills four criteria, including seeing the ability in question, having his target answer an inquiry about the ability, as well as having them touch the handprint on the cover of the book. And finally, all of this needs to be accomplished within an hour. It's an incredible and almost impossible set of restrictions, but when implemented correctly, it results in a nifty ability. And nothing is off limits to Crollo. He can even steal other specialist abilities as well. And this would be the exact action he took in the York New City arc by targeting another the specialist by the name of Neon Estrade, who had a fascinating Hatsu known as Lovely Ghost Writer. And this is quite probably one of the greater examples of specialization because it's such a bizarre ability. Basically, it allows Neon to predict the future through cryptic poetry, or more accurately, not Neon herself, but the manifested presence of what looks to be a Nen Beast. And this presence then manipulates Neon's arm to write a poem. In terms of restrictions, this does require the target of the prophecy to write their full name, date of birth, and blood type on the same piece of paper intended for 
the poem, and either the physical presence of the target or a photo of them. So it would appear to be something of a consensual activation, like Neon can't just predict anybody's future that she wishes. The target definitely has to want this to happen as well. In addition to this, Neon can only predict roughly a month into the future, with each verse representing one week. And most importantly, Neon cannot predict her own future. Although in this regard, Crollo was quite tricksy in circumventing this by having Neon predict his future before he stole the lovely Ghostwriter ability. But this is specialization incarnate. There are certain parts of Nen construction one can identify, such as conjuring the Nen beast and having it manipulate you, which is not unheard of actually. But by and large, there is just no formula for aura usage that can result in an ability like this from the basic typings. For more of this though, let's continue with the Phantom Troop because they have an often forgotten second specialist on their team being Pakunoda. And she has a pretty insane mind reading style ability known as psychometry. And to activate it, she just needs to be in physical contact with her target and then ask some specific questions. And apparently she can also use this to extract memories as well. Plus it can also be applied to physical objects using her power to see into the recent past of said object, although it's never specifically stated what that limit is. But it's another one of those esoteric abilities taking advantage of an aspect not accessible by basic aura mechanisms, but that's not even all because Pakunoda also has a secondary Hatsu known as Memory Bomb. And here Pakunoda can share her own memories by seemingly infusing them into Nen bullets and then firing them directly into the heads of her targets, which sounds quite violent, but is ever so effective. Very interestingly though, she can also share the memories of others that she has extracted, but if she shoots a target with their own memory, then that memory is simply erased, which I guess makes memory return somewhat impossible, which is hmm, very intriguing. But for another particularly famous case of specialization though, we now turn to Nefapito. And Pito is an especially fun case due to their nature of being a Chimera Ant Royal Guard born with a godly reservoir of aura, because this has given Pito license to do effectively anything that they want. Usually aura is a substance to be preserved and used very efficiently. One needs to think extraordinarily carefully or be very much in need to manifest it into a Hatsu. But with Pito, they just had the freedom to turn whatever whim they had into an ability. And one such example would be Dr. Blythe, a Nen beast created for the purpose of healing, or well, not healing, but more accurately performing very specific and knowledgeable surgery. And in order to achieve something as potent, Pito is not allowed to use any other Nen ability, be it a Hatsu or some other basic invocation, whilst Dr. Blythe is active. And the Conjure Giant doll also cannot move from the spot where it was summoned until the job is done. But Pito also created two more specialist Hatsu, one of which being the, uh, the big old clown thing that controls corpses, and another known as Terpsichora, which was designed to control the body of Pito themselves and to allow Pito to push past their natural limits. However, with these two latter Hatsu, I should note that they are not necessarily specialist invocations because both of them could be explained as a combination of manipulation, conjuration, and or emission. But it is still completely unknown, particularly in the case of Terpsichora. But look, there is a surprising amount of specialist Chimera Ants though, and we would be remiss not to mention that King Meruem is indeed one of them. Now Meruem often gets mistaken as an enhancer by certain factions of the fan base, because to be fair, he doesn't really engage in much of the world of Nen, because his existence lies beyond such trivial concepts of power, and he really only uses the more basic techniques attached to the art form. But he is a specialist, and that could be seen in his one natural Hatsu, known as Aura Synthesis, which gives him the ability to devour Nen users or parts of Nen users, thus gathering more aura for himself, and even acquiring the abilities of those Nen users. But really, the fact that Meruem is a specialist only goes to further terrify me when it comes to his character, because that affinity does basically make him a god who could have done quite literally anything he wanted. He was just never pushed far enough into developing Mohatsu, because I suppose this world just did not have the power to require such an endeavor. Here's one that surprises me though, because the mighty Lion Lei All would also be an example of a specialist, and he holds kind of like a budget version of Crawler's Skill Hunter, which in this case is called Rental Bot. So as the name implies, rather than stealing, this allows Lei All to borrow an inability after meeting two conditions. Firstly, he has to witness the ability just as with Crollo, and secondly, he needs to do the owner of said ability a favor and then have them confirm that general concept of debt, which records an IOU for every successful favor accomplished. Leo can then call in these IOUs and use the ability for an hour for each IOU, during which time the original owner cannot access their ability. So yeah, it's a much less effective skill hunter, especially because it doesn't allow Leo to become too familiar with his new powers, but it is significantly easier to invoke, which is a great example of the wonderful balance of Nen. And you know what? I have one more specialist ant for you now, being Meliaron, who has a two tier Hatsu collection going on here with Perfect Plan, which grants him invisibility whilst holding his breath. Not just that though, but it also essentially 
essentially erases any trace of Melioron's presence to those around him. And in fact, he even becomes undetectable by N, although you can still track Melioron by smell. Stinky ant. But he can also extend the effect of Perfect Plan to a friend via the use of God's Accomplice, which just requires physical contact with another living being or object, I guess. And as for limitations beyond holding his breath, it is implied that he may need to form a bond with his accomplice prior to performing this Hatsu, and also that the partner may need to agree in order for it to work. That is not confirmed though, it's just implied. So Meliron has a pretty great thing going for him here though, not widely powerful in combative situations, but the perfect utility ability, which is where most specialist class users land. Really cool and unexpected powers that open up a whole new world of options for Nen use. But our final specialist on today's menu will come from the manga events and it is 4th Prince Saradnik, a rapidly developing natural Nen genius who has very much subconsciously developed an incredible Hatsu called Parallel Future. And if you're familiar at all with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, this ability is basically King Crimson, but much more balanced and to be honest, far, far better explained. Although it is a very clear reference to that particular Jojo stand. And look, without going too deeply into it because it requires diagrams and lots of explanation, Saradnik can see 10 seconds into the future but this vision runs parallel to reality, so the events are happening in real time. But Saradnik's visions are 10 seconds ahead. The issue is that he needs to be in a state of Zetsu to activate it though, making him potentially completely defenseless to anybody who can overcome his precognition. So he's a pretty scary dude, and he's also one of the individuals who falls pretty perfectly into Hisoka's personality assessment. People gravitate towards his charisma, which is very dangerous because that is a trap, which generally results in Saradnik brutally murdering people for the sake of his artistic endeavors. To begin to conclude specialization though, there are many abilities in this series which may come under this category from users who are not attributed to the specialist class. The primary example of that coming to mind would be Bisky, who is a natural transmuter. However, her body transformation can't actually be explained by any of the basic name categories. And in fact, due to how it happens, spawning from her hatred of her natural form, this is very much in line with how specialist powers are developed. It happened entirely naturally from raw desire. So while it is incredibly unlikely, Bisky may be another example example of a person who became a specialist later in life. However, she is officially labeled as a transmuter. And in fact, to this end, you could also probably say the same thing about Gon's transformation. This was a desperate situation in which he may very well have developed specialist Nen to activate. However, I suppose it could also be enhancement because we have seen examples of enhancement like this that do focus purely on physical growth and Nen buffing like Bill's Erigeron. So this could just be a pretty extreme example of that. Another one that piques my interest though would be Palm Siberia because two of her abilities being Wink Blue and Moment Clairvoyance once again can't really be explained by the five basic typings and their results very much fall in line with specialist abilities. So there's a lot of interesting stuff to explore here with specialization and a great degree of mystery that even in this late stage of Hunt Hunter still surrounds it. However, what I will say is that there has never been a moment in the series where a specialist has been introduced and it did not provide an incredible sense of hype with great trepidation. Specialists are by far the most versatile and potentially devastating Nen users because they have no restrictions placed on their power with the exception of or a quantity. And as such, should a particularly powerful and driven person be bestowed with the specialist affinity, well, then that creates some of Hunter Hunter's most profound and memorable world figures. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you're keen for some more Hunt Hunter content, then please do go and check out some of my other videos or even subscribe to the channel for regular Hunt Hunter glory delivered straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the New World Review and I'll see you next time.